County Representative. Is, George is not here tonight. Okay. Go to the boathouse. Go to Essex County. Go to the Swans. We, we don't have a representative, so now we're going to go to reports. Ms. Paul Eckler, do you have any reports? Yes, I do. Um, from the Environmental Commission, we had um, Andy Birnbaum from Green Schools made a presentation and outlined her concerns about how the playing fields are being sprayed with pesticides. She and other parents feel there is still not proper notification and oversight. The overreaching goal of this group is to limit exposure of township residents to toxins that have been proven harmful to humans and animals to promote the safety, health, and well-being of township representatives and their pets. The Environmental Commission members brainstormed some ideas and they came up with an idea of possibly safe playing fields or safe playing fields for all that a group could be formed. A committee, be it an ad hoc committee, be it an advisory committee, with possibly representatives from the Rec Department, from Environmental Commission, from the Township Committee, DPW, Shade Tree, and try to come up with some regulations that would regulate when spraying takes place, how and when um, push notifications go out on the Rec website, on the town website, better signage, just things that would make the parents more comfortable with the playing field because people are not really sure when they were sprayed and what the safety zones are. They will also be having at back to school at the high school a petition table for parents assigned to start being more educated and start a media push a campaign about plastics and their impact on the environment. So far in New Jersey, 13 municipalities have signed past ordinances that will ban plastic, single-use plastic bags. This is something that government, Governor Murphy has been working on, and we would hope Milburn will somehow also move in that direction with plastic straws. A lot of the restaurants in town have been working on not handing out straws, and even if, if a patron asks for a straw. So those are basically things that we talked about. They also had a lot of good input in the master plan with Beth Zoll, who is a liaison from the planning board. So they've added a lot of good environmental protective things they would like to see in the master plan moving forward. And oh, there's my bracelet, and that's my report. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the first report? Yes. yes. I apologize for being late. Ms. Lieberberg. Uh, the Public Works Ad Hoc Committee met on September 13th to continue discussions about the potential relocation. Currently, we are exploring the feasibility of the JFK site and will continue our due diligence about that location, access, DEP regulations, and other logistical environmental issues need to be explored further. We will plan to meet again on October 18th. Stay tuned for more information. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Rosenberg? A few different things. Uh, the Senior Citizen Committee met last week, and there's a lot of exciting activities going forward this fall. We hope that people participate, and their website is very, is, is up on their, it's up on the website. One of the best parts of the meeting was showing the seniors the app. Some of them who didn't have phone, you know, still had flip phones and everything and showing them the app and they were excited. There, sponsored by Chamber of Commerce, all day on Sunday. I happen to be sponsoring a shredding truck, so if you have any shredding, as you learned at our last meeting, you cannot now shred and then put the shredded paper in your garbage because they won't take it. So I decided to sponsor a shredding truck because I have a lot of shredding too. So from 11 to 2, if you want to shred for free, Last year, there was a bank that sponsored, and they're no longer sponsoring. So it, share it around. Hopefully, people will come and, and, and shred away. <laughs> That's it. Thank you. Mr. Levy. Yes, thank you. On September 12, the uh, Board of Recreation or Recreation Commissioners met, and here are the highlights. The Giro Park Tennis Court has been resurfaced. It's available for play. The Slayton Tennis Court has been lined for the now popular pickleball, but the net has not been lowered. So if you want to play pickleball, you have to play on a tennis net, but you do have the lines. There are no plans to lower the net at this point. A par three bench donation was made by the family of Wells Ferdinand. At Taylor Park and Taylor Street, the Milburn Free Library has installed a stand, take a book, leave a book. There are numerous books in there. Residents are encouraged to bring the books that they no longer need, stick them in there, take books, and return them. 
Jira Park will be undergoing a playground renovation either in the fall this year or the spring, weather dependent, in which 32 agility play stations will be added, including a new surface. The township pool had 34,000 visits this year, which is about the same as it was last year. And the most popular recreation event in the last five years, Dr. Stem, sold out in seven minutes. Dr. Stem is going to be adding a new class, which is between first and for first and fifth graders. So pay attention to the website for when that new class will be added. And finally, a new freshman field is being examined for the Milburn Short Hill Hills Youth Baseball League at the high school. There's some thought about refurbishing a field to add another field for teams to practice. That concludes my report. Thank you. Mr. Holmes, do you have any report? Nothing no report, Mayor. Do you have a report? No report, Mayor. Mr. Alexander, Mr. McDonald. <laughs> Mr. McDonald? Um, yes, yeah, just a few uh, brief reports. I've been asked to report on um, um, the, the flex parking spaces, and the, the township has been removing um, the tape that uh, was once there. Uh, this was done um, for both safety and aesthetic reasons. Um, you know, uh, what we're doing is they're removing that uh, adhesive tape on the south side of Milburn Avenue, at which point then we will test um, normal water-based paint and thermoplastic paint um, on uh, a spot there to see what will adhere best to, uh, to that surface, um, as concrete is not always the easiest thing to have uh, paint adhere to. Um, but uh, some people may have seen them out there, but that's what they're doing. Um, also, just a reminder to residents that on 924 on Monday, New Jersey American Water will start their work on Parsonage Hill Road. Again, that will result in daily road closures from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, and that work is expected to last through November. Again, this is um, anticipatory to the county's paving of both Parsonage Hill and Old Short Hills Road, <coughs> excuse me, at beginning uh, early in the spring, sometime after March 15th. Um, and just reporting that I have spoken to both chair, the chair of the planning board and the chair of the zoning board uh, about the live streaming. They're going to discuss it with their <coughs> uh, each respective boards, I think, at their next meetings. And um, with respect to that, we also have to deal with additional cameras, right? Correct. We've, uh, we've looked into the additional camera um, for the angle toward the presenter, um, which um, you know may be an option re re regardless. But I think it's it, you know to have that additional angle and be able to um, have some added features to our YouTube channel um, for the live streaming. And just with respect to your first report that I came in on, mm -hmm. the environmental on the on the fields. Right. My suggestion is going to be that the environmental commission reach out to the joint fields committee. Okay. And make a presentation to them because since we really do have a committee in place already addressing and dealing with the fields, which has both Board, board of Ed members, Township Committee members, Public members, um, Rec Committee members, the whole nine yards, so it might make sense for them to make the... Uh, no pun <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Who's the chairperson of that? Who is the chair? Is it Neil? Um, yes. Neil Healy. Neil, okay. It and is, but just on that, uh, I used to be chair. I used to be a liaison for joint on the uh, uh, board of ed, and on the board of ed fields and the joint fields, anytime there was spraying, first of all, it was organic spraying at, at least when I was there, and the fields were closed and marked. So I understand that there's some concern that mm -hmm. children are playing on sprayed fields, but at that time, they were marked with signs and closed, and closed for a period of time in which. Uh, whoever was in charge of doing the spraying determined that it was no longer a threat to the extent it was a threat at all uh, to children playing. I don't know if that policy has changed. Well, one of my suggestions that we do, that we have the Environmental Commission go to the joint fields is I think there'll be a better understanding as to what actually goes on. Right. I think she was concerned that there's flags, they don't seem to be updated, the dates aren't clear, there should be a larger sign. There are some regulations possibly from New Jersey that they would like to see. Also, they still say it's difficult to find when the push, no there's not push notifications. It's difficult to go on 
the rec website or the town website to see where and when they were sprayed, if they were sprayed 72 hours, just some concerns that okay. the parents have. Yeah, right. but they, they used to time them. I mean, this was, this was the, the right. address. They used to time it in ways where uh, it wouldn't be a, a risk to anyone. But, I think but it, they could might very disagree. Well, it could very yeah. well be that the people who are currently under environmental weren't, weren't as, uh, are not as aware now as what was going on then. There might be a, a lack of communication. So I think that if environmental goes to the joint meeting, uh, I'm sorry, the joint field meeting mm -hmm. and, and makes their presentation, there'll be at least a, a um, some communications that uh, hopefully will put everybody on the same page. I think that's a great start. Thank you. Sure. All right. Um, did the, uh, George is going to do this. Okay. So the next is the consent agenda. Are there any, <clears throat> so the consent agenda items, resolutions are bills list, authorized refund of tax overpayments, affirm our civil rights policy, a shared service agreement with Springfield with respect to the sewer camera that we've discussed. It's pretty short. <laughs> wow. Are there any comments uh, or, or questions from the public with respect to the consent, inge consent agenda items? Any questions or comments from the committee with respect to the consent agenda items? None. May I have a motion to approve the resolutions listed on the consent agenda? So moved. May I have a second? Second. second. Mr. Levy? Yes. Ms. Lieberberg? Yes. Ms. Rosenberg? Yes. Ms. Bell-Eglow? Yes. And Mayor Burson? Yes. All right. We have uh, an ordinance to introduce a first reading. No? Second Sorry, reading second reading first. I this is the public can. I missed half. Um, Ms. Rosenberg, you are scheduled to sponsor ordinance 250918, second reading. I present for consideration an ordinance entitled Ordinance Number 2509-18, Ordinance of the Township of Milburn, County of Essex, State of New Jersey, amending Article 5 of the Revised General Ordinances of the Township of Milburn. This is our chicken ordinance. The purpose of this ordinance is to provide the appropriate standards and regulations for the keeping of chickens for non-commercial purposes within the suburban residential environment of Milburn Township. The ordinance establishes standards and limitations so that we can avoid adverse impacts on neighboring properties and residents and to provide for the health and safety of the chickens. Tonight is the time set for the public hearing and final passage as advertised in accordance with law. I declare the hearing open. <laughs> now, is there anyone from the public who would like to make any comment? with respect to ordinance 2509-18 um, regulating chickens. Anyone from the committee who would like to make any comments or have any questions with respect to this ordinance? No? Okay. I move that this public hearing be closed and the ordinance be adopted on final reading and that the township clerk be directed to publish the ordinance by title and pass on final reading in accordance with law. I have a second. 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 May I have a roll call, please? Mr. Levy? Yes. <coughs> Ms. Lieberberg? Yes. Ms. Rosenberg? Yes. Ms. Gall Edlow? Yes. And Mayor Burstein? Yes. Mr. Levy, we are scheduled to sponsor Ordinance 2511 18 in the introduction. This ordinance amends Ordinance 12 92, which created a special improvement district known as a SID within the township to include certain prop property enumerated in Section 3. Essentially, we're adding three locations to the uh, bid. They are 389 Milburn Avenue, Block 1211, Lot 5, typically known as the Red Cross Building. Block 805, Lot 2, 296 Milburn Avenue, and Block 1207, Lot 15, 251 Essex Street, known as Emerald Garden. I move that this ordinance be taken up and passed on first reading and that the township clerk be authorized to have the ordinance published in accordance with law on the item and for hearing and final passage on Tuesday, October 2, 2018. May I have a second? Second. May I have a roll call vote, please? Mr. Levy? Yes. Ms. Lieberberg? Yes. Ms. Rosenberg? Yes. Ms. Paul Eglow? Yes. And Mayor Burstein? Yes. Ms. Paul Eglow, you have ordinance 251. 
I would like to present an ordinance entitled Ordinance Authorizing Assignment of Open Air Cafe Property Lease Agreement between the Township and CB, Charlie Brown Milburn, LLC to JGIL Milburn, LLC. And this is the courtyard area behind Starbucks and Charlie Brown's. Charlie Brown's was sold to um, the Hula Hands Group. So this lease goes through August 31st, 2018. It just has to be assigned to the new property owner. And then on November 1st, we can exercise our ability to release that and talk to them about what their interest would be. <coughs> I move that the ordinance be taken up and passed on first reading and that the township clerk be authorized to have the ordinance published in accordance with law in the item and for hearing and final passage on Tuesday, October 2nd, 2018. May I have a second? Second. May I have a vote, please? Mr. Levy? Yes. Ms. Lieberberg? Yes. Ms. Rosenberg? Yes. Ms. Thaw-Aikwell? Yes. Mr. Mayor Bertine? Yes. Does any committee member have an item of new business to address? I do. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So. In talking about the streets, we've had a stalemate here that's lasted well over a year. We had Gary Toth come to the committee almost a year ago in November and talk to us about placemaking, about a concept that brings the public and the elected officials together to try to figure out what to do about situations like this. We've made policy as Township Committee, which includes complete streets, and that policy is still in effect. But we've been in a stalemate as to what to do to finish effectuating that policy, tweak that policy, or what we're doing. So at this point, I want to ask the other committee members to consider meeting with Gary Toth, since nothing really has happened since he came here in November and spoke to us. I think you might have met, or Alex might have met with him, and he was talking about having a proposal. But I think that we need to figure out where we're going so that we could break a stalemate. I looked a little bit at his website. and. Uh, Placemaking is a concept that refers to a collaborative process shaping our public realm to maximize shared value. It's not just promoting urban design, but placemaking facilitates creative patterns of use, paying attention to what defines a place. What's most important is that it's a shared process between community and the elected officials. And I've heard enough people think that they weren't somehow part of the process, even though the minutes of Complete Street show that public was part of the process. At this point, to help us get past this stalemate, I suggest that we involve the public more and that this is a way to do that. So let me just see I understand what you're saying. When you keep, you keep using the word stalemate, do you mean that we sort of just haven't moved on to the next stage and that we're really talking about having them help us um, go forward with stage two and to try to figure out what, if anything, we want to do? Go forward. Whether right. it's stage two or addressing stage one and a half, whatever it is, we're at, a, we're at a stalemate and we haven't done anything. So if stage two was something that we want to go forward with, then that's fine. But at this point, there's people in stage two that are those merchants that I understand from Alex haven't fixed their curbs because they thought we were doing it. And they, it's t they're going to be fined and they're being cited. We, everybody deserves to know where we stand. So, so yes. Think stage two, but I meant the, whatever the next step is going to be. The Moving next forward. step. The next step. But one of their principles is that the community is the expert. So the starting point, it said, on their site is to identify talents and assets within the community. There are people who could provide a historical perspective, insights into how the area functions, understanding issues, and what's meaningful. So. It includes pop-up workshops, includes engagement and observation by these professionals, either Gary Toth and his group, or I'm sure there's other placemakers. In fact, there's a placemaking association right in Springfield or New Jersey. Uh, when I looked. So just was trying to figure out a creative way, sort of more of a mediated way, because if the five of us have not done anything in a, you know, in, since all year, I suggest it's time. So um, I'm glad you brought this up. I was going to actually try to bring this up under old business, but new, old, it should be discussed. Um, so are you saying move forward but not address the community's feelings about the current stage one, what we have now currently? Because I think that is also what we've been hearing from 
the survey that was taken, no matter how you feel about the survey, there was a survey. So, um, I mean, I would it'd be totally in favor of meeting with this, but I would recommend that we seriously consider reevaluating what has been done. There's no reason we can't. Mm -hmm. it, it's part of the holistic process. So, but I think we need a third party that's going to facilitate this between us and the public. So you're recommending, I'm recommending an ad hoc that committee? No. No. Oh, I'm recommending that we hire, I don't want to call them a mediator, but this. No, a, what she's talking about is the third, a third party to facilitate whatever happens next. Well, it's it, not, it, an, not an ad hoc that we create. I don't want an ad hoc like we had last year that simply had too much, um, too many, too many difficulties. To have an ad hoc, you, you need, I wouldn't create an ad hoc at this point with people who are anti. I would want an ad hoc with people who are creative vision. And I'm not, I don't believe that I'm in a position to do that, so if we can have a third party, a, a comp, there are a lot of them, there's the New Jersey, what are they called, Creative New Jersey, there's uh, Public Places, is that Gary Todd's company? This one was, there yes, number, this was Project number, for Public Spaces. There are a number of organizations that do exactly that, and the question is whether we want to invest in that. Do we have an idea of what kind of cost that we're talking about? A little bit, only because I did a little bit of research, but I haven't met with them. I think that in pairs of two, maybe we can meet and find out what the proposals are, but there's a sliding scale of how much involvement we need. But it's, it's, it depends on how much observation they do. Um, they, it says it could take up to from three months to a year process. Right. was just their average. You engage them, they observe, uh, they vision, they design. But this all includes pop-up workshops with the public. So although it's not an ad hoc, if the public is involved in the process, then I think that's kind of the way to get in what but people want to do. When she says they're designing, they're not designing streets. They're, mm -hmm. they're designing a program for us to move forward. Again, I, I haven't met with them, so I'd be happy to meet with them with you and find out more so we can report back. But I want to know if there's a consensus among us to at least move forward with moving forward towards that. Well, we have to do something. But I believe before we move forward, we have to look a little backwards and see what happened. And we have to make real consensus and determination of what we want to do before we spend more money in any aspect. There needs to be a comprehensive plan that must include what's been done, including the traffic in South Mountain and Washington section. It's not just Milburn Avenue. There's such a tremendous problem here, I feel. I don't know how you have a com comprehensive plan without planning. We need a plan. We need to be willing to, but so far so, we haven't had anyone willing to look, have we? I'll take that as a yes. And, and what's the criteria for participation? Oh, sorry. What's the criteria for participation, or is this just an open forum where residents, merchants, that's my question. What is I don't think we're there. I think that they would you would be sitting with them in creating a program to do that. I don't I don't know that we they have the whole they, when they do these things they have a lot of different people from all walks of the town and participate. So would it be merchants, would it be residents, would it be this, would it be that would be everybody? I don't understand your question in terms of I don't think it's a limited well, I was just asking what the what the previous scope would in, would in, what would it entail in terms of the scope of participants that they have done historically. That was my question. I get the I understand. I get the impression is that we as a committee would decide to engage one of these groups, and that's part of once they're engaged, there's the outreach at whatever whatever you know whatever they recommend and we we agree to and we would direct them essentially it the includes committee. surveying it includes outreach it includes whatever the scope we think it does but they first need to meet with us and basically be engaged so it's called placemaking it's one of those newer terms at least do some research please and we can talk at the next meeting but i thought that it's something that we should consider well, that's true. We don't have to decide today. It's just for new business. New business. Any thoughts, sir? No comments.
Okay. Whole business. Mr. McDonald, you're going to discuss electronic signs. Um, <clears throat> yes, uh, I've been working with uh, Committee Woman Lieber Burke on, on uh, looking at the possibility of uh, an electronic sign placement. Um, worked through um, looking at some specifications. Um, I think that, you know, um, most people here would be familiar with the Milburn Middle School sign that was just recently placed, uh, which has a, a good quality LED, uh, 16 millimeter, you know, uh, sign. Um, so that's sort of what we've been we've been looking at for um, possible placement. I think three areas were identified. And Jackie certainly jumped in there. Yeah. <laughs> three areas were identified, um, you know, as possible placement, uh, which would be um, the uh, somewhere uh, near Jero, um somewhere in the vicinity of uh, Lackawanna and Glen, and then um, possibly Town Hall as, uh, as well. Um, whether that's, you know, one to start and see, you know, what, what um, how it goes and sort of learn from that and, 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 and uh, what that can be. But um, started putting together some pricing um, on, on, on the signage and, <clears throat> you know, dealing with um, um, some of these various companies. But I think the committee for the base sign uh, would be looking somewhere in the ballpark of about seventeen to to twenty five thousand um, dollars for the for the base sign, and then I think you can you can you could create um, whether it's through our public works department or um, through um, uh, some outside company other than the sign company to create a, a, a space around that sign that you would that you would like um, to create a uh, aesthetic feel to it. Um, and then, and then certainly the other component to it would be um, electric. But what's good about s some of these signs is that you have uh, wireless technology in which you just sit from your computer web based, and you can update that sign um, when needed. I uh, don't actually have to um, <coughs> be at a specific computer or at a or at the sign itself, um, which I think is great. Um, but but certainly <coughs> following the model, I think of the middle school sign. Uh, which has great quality and uh, you know is an LED uh, uh, sign is sort of the route that we've uh, started going down here. Can I just ask uh, the seventeen to twenty five thousand dollar base? Mm -hmm. Is that inclusive of all costs, including oh. electric? No. Okay. That is the the ba base for the sign. So okay. the sign itself. So what what would a total cost be for one of these signs? I think you'd be minus? talking about twenty to thirty. Twenty to thirty. You know, some of that would be depend if you if you used uh, DPW to do some masonry work around it, or if, or if you um, if you were fine with just a you know a normal um, you know wood wood type sign around it. Um, you know, we'd have to get some get some choices, get some mock-ups, um, show them to the committee, and, and let you know. I I also think it would be a nice project if we could engage some of our students or our architects. Um, maybe run some kind of contest uh, that in affiliation with this to get some input from the community that would look at some art aesthetic that could complement the signage would be uh, would be a nice idea. This is a great initiative. Is there any grant funding available? Um, we have reached out to, to the county um, to see if there's anything available. Um, I'm waiting to hear from them. They're, they are putting uh, feelers out. Um, but, um, but generally there's not, um, <clears throat> we haven't seen any grant funding for this. Generally, it's some sort of donation or, or something like that to, to put up a sign. So people could adopt the sign if we couldn't? They could. But, you know, that would be something whether, you know, um, the committee would have to decide whether they want to go down that road. You mean adopt the sign, they get free advertising rights on it? Just thinking right. how somebody else could pay for it. Sponsored by. Sponsored by. <laughs> and this would be at Town Hall, the first sign. No, I actually, we want to yeah. Yeah. I actually think that the first one should maybe go by the library. Because um, that's a busy corner. A lot of people use the resources of the library. Obviously, this is just, you know, subject to verification and, and what well, yeah. fellow committee. Um, and but and that, it, that's, wanna, that, that would be secondary. Well, yeah. You know. Certainly, but but I think but I think any any of those locations have they, they all have their, their their pros and cons to it. But but certainly you want something that's going to be visible in a high traffic area to the public, and all of those sort of fit that bill. Is there a discount for two? 
Um, <laughs> That's going to be explored. Bogo? Yeah. Yes. And, and, and in, yeah. My, in my initial exploration, um, there's there's not there's not much of an economy mm -hmm. of scale there. Mm -hmm. um, but but there would be some. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thanks for following up on that. I think it's a positive thing. So I guess the next question is, what are we doing? Well, is we wanna, if, if, I, I, wanna, think if I, I think we want to get it. Cons first of all, we need to know budget budgetarily what we could do this year. Yeah, and I think I think it, this year you would be limited to doing one time. Okay, so that would be, and and I'm just, am I correct in presuming we have a consensus that we want to go ahead with a sign? Yes, but I'd like to know before we authorize the funds whether we fully exhausted anybody else helping fund it. Well, again, I've, I've reached out to Essex County, and I'll let the committee know uh, what their response is. Um, but, um, Assuming but in, that no. and, and also in the in, in the research I've done with m multiple other towns, um, there was no indication of, of grant funding. So, I mean, some of them were, you know, again, donated in some way, shape, or form. But, but that does at times come with the um, desire to have uh, placement on that side. Okay. One more question. Would it be within legal rights to have the DMDA chip in like they did in Springfield? Um, if they have extra funding. We don't know what their funding is. Sure, if, if that was something that the DMDA would, would be. If they were willing to do it? Well, I don't think we can compel them. Is that no, no. If they were willing, are they allowed legally to spend that money that way? I don't know what the parameters I'm, are. I'm, I'm, again, I'm sure if, if they wanted to and it had if it had value and impact mm -hmm. to the, the individuals that they serve. But but again, I think township community can necessarily compel them to spend their money. No, of course. But for example, if it said welcome to downtown Milburn and it said Milburn Live this week. Exactly. It would be nice if we had ways to publicize and things or farmers benefit. market. Right, exactly. Right. Okay. School but that board that's might kick in. what? School board might kick in on this if you throw them some but they, Some play? They, 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 have their, they have their signs as well. They have a sign. Okay, so here's okay. the question. Is there a consensus that whatever the funding is, mm -hmm. the funding source is, are we do, is this something that people want to do? I would yes. Go, yes. Yes. Yes, okay. Yes. All right. We'll so get the whole Yeah. I mean, it's not going to happen tomorrow anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Any other old business? I have just a question. If it was DMDA in some shape or form, would it have to be within the jurisdiction of the DMDA or could it be anywhere in town? Would it have to be within the... I, I, no. I, I'm just I asking. Yeah. I, no? I, I, no, but I think it would make sense. For yes, the, the, it DMDA would make sense, correct. but that would... Like at the gateway that we, you know, or something like that. Right. Well, maybe they want to advertise in other parts of town. Who knows? Right? So. All right. Uh, public discussion. When invited to speak, please come to the lectern, state your name and address, speak into the microphone so your comments can be understood by all and properly recorded. If you're reading from a prepared statement, please, uh, if you have it in hand, give it to Megan Patrick, our acting clerk, or send it to C. Gotti, C -G -A -T -T -I, at Milburn Township, TWP.org. We're asking everybody to limit their comments to three minutes. Um, we are not going to time it tonight, as we didn't last time as well. Um, if it's abused, we'll start again. But if it's not abused, there's no reason to do it. So um, if anybody, any member of the public has comments, please feel free to come up to the podium and speak. Good evening, Judy Rosenthal, 12th Marion Short House. Um, I'm calling to report on uh, a planning board meeting to which I was invited to attend in West Orange. Um, at that meeting, the county executive presented a number of experts regarding yet another project of uh, county executive DiVincenzo for the Turtleback Zoo. Um, he just can't seem to get enough of expanding that zoo. The first expert was an architect, architect slash structural engineer. He presented um, schematics for a proposed 519 uh, spot parking deck, rerouting of the little Turtleback Zoo train, 
and construction of some new maintenance buildings. He was asked by a number of members of the public where the number 519 came from. And he said, I don't know, you have to ask the traffic engineer. Three experts later, finally around 10 o'clock at night, the traffic engineer spoke. He was asked first what he did. He counted cars. He was then asked, how many cars did you count? I don't know. I didn't bring that data with me. What day of the week did you count cars? I don't remember. What time of day did you count cars? I don't know. Did you do a traffic study? Not really. So where did the number 519 come from? I don't know. So Joe DiVincenzo is basically pulling numbers out of his you-know-what in order to build a garage with absolutely no factual foundation. For lawyers in the room, this is classic net opinion. Um, I have repeatedly stressed how, um, how much stormwater runoff affects this town, especially the residents in South, the South Mountain Estates area. It's only getting worse, and we're witnessing the effects of climate change at, in other parts of the United States as we sit here. I have photographs on my cell phone that I've emailed to zoo personnel showing ponding in areas of the reservation that aren't ponds. If you drive along Brookside and go out towards uh, Turtleback Zoo, at the corner of Brookside and South Orange Avenue, in heavy rains, you'll see one pond. When you drive to the Swan Boats directly across the street, there's another pond. They are not retention basins. There is, these are just pop-up ponds, if you will. The South Mountain Reservation can't hold its own water. So um, myself and other members of other towns have been talking about what can we do. And it appears as though the consensus is that the different municipalities have got to pass resolutions asking the county executive or the freeholders, as the case may be, I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not up on my administrative law, um, to consider a halt to further expansion of the Turtleback Zoo. I'm not recommending that if the county executive wants to improve exhibits, for example, they're improving, I think it's the, the penguin exhibit. That's one thing, if they're upgrading. Um, but there just seems to be this never-ending drive to pave over various parts of the reservation. I'm not sure that whatever legal document established the reservation even permits him to do this. After all, what was the mission of the South Mountain Reservation? It was not created as an entertainment area. It was not created as an amusement park, but that's the direction that the county executive is going. So I would greatly appreciate it if you would um, consider passing a resolution in some form or another. I know that um, there are efforts underway in West Orange to do the same. At least th the people are asking that w West Orange do it. I don't know it's going to happen, but if there could be a coordinated effort um, I would greatly appreciate it because we're heading, you know, we're, we're, at, the, we're at the verge of a precipice here as Thank far you. as uh, environmental impact goes. Thanks. Anyone else want to make a comment? Hi. Good evening, Alyssa Sutton, 75 Mountain View Road. I sent each of you two emails this past week with various pictures of our uh, public workers with a look, what looked like a hair dryer um, sitting on a bucket. And one's with the hair dryer, one's scraping up the $3,000 parking lines on the flex parking that we took a survey to remove. I want to know how much this is costing, who authorized this, 
How much time are we putting into this? What's gonna happen when you finally get the mastic up, which is actually making more dirt on the sidewalk. So we're spending hours scraping it. The white's coming up, the mastic is stuck. Once we get that up, what are we gonna do with it? And why are we spending, I think I've seen them six days now, six days, at least half days, six different times. I have photographs I'd be happy to share with you. I actually spoke to them, said, why? Why are you doing this? Who instructed you to do this? Along with that note, the light was taken out in front of La Strada. How much did that cost? It should have never been put in. It wasn't in line with the other lights. It was in the way of their door. It was in the way of their tables. They made a request a year ago for that to be removed. I'm in touch with the owner. And he told me Alex came in and told him the light's being removed. How much did that cost? Um, there was another light removed by the park. So now we have four lights that we paid for ugly contemporary lights on the design that we paid millions of dollars for are now been removed. How much did that cost? Where are we putting the four new lights that we removed from the old lights? Who's monitoring this? Are we just letting people make decisions and then just everybody gonna sit back and say okay? I, I want this to be known. I want this out there. Uh, along with that, we have several um, bollards that are, have been hit. They are tilted. We have some bollards that are not there. They're removed. It just looks awful. So with all this scraping and all this money being spent, are we going to power wash? Are we going to just take one spot and see if paint adheres to the concrete? Um, we put men on the moon. I'm sure we could figure out before painting one parking spot in Milburn's Flex Parking if paint adheres to concrete. Um, I, I just I don't understand where this is coming from. In addition to that, um, I was at the Chabad at Short Hills grand opening, the, cut, the ribbon cutting ceremony. The entire township committee of Livingston showed up and spoke, uh, the mayor spoke beautifully, and they all showed up in support of the shul opening up, and we had two representatives there, and I was kind of embarrassed for our town. This was a big deal, so I don't know what goes on with the decision making of who's going and what happens, but very disappointed, uh, very unprofessional to me. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Brett Cohn. I live on Wyndham Road. In Short Hills, I've been a resident for about 15 years. Um, I want to talk to you about a public safety concern. This is something that I've been emailing and speaking to members of the committee about for some time now. Um, I have, uh, for me, it's a public safety concern. It's, it's a community concern for me. I think it's also personal. I have, I have a child who's about to get his driver's license, another one right behind him. And um, there's an intersection near my home on the corner of Hobart and Highland that has been the source of countless accidents over the 15 years that, that I've lived there. Um, and I know that there have been recent improvements to that intersection made on Hobart to add the word stop on the road and to light up the stop signs. But frankly, don't. I, certainly don't think that's a, a bad thing to do, but it did, didn't address the real problem. The real, the real problem in my mind is that people come speeding down the hill on Highland and, and people from Hobart enter the intersection without realizing it and they get, they get hit, or they come from the other direction around the tennis courts. And it's, it's, uh, to me, this, is, this would be easily solved with a four-way four stop at that intersection. And uh, frankly, after what the town, township decided to add a th an all-way stop in the corner of Lackawanna and Glen, an intersection that has probably similar amount of volume, if not more volume, um, it seemed to me that it seemed like an obvious solution to fix, to fix the intersection of Highland and Hobart, a low-cost solution at that. Um, <clears throat> so, um, you know, you can research two four-way stops on the, on the internet and find out lots of information about them, and there's certainly pros and cons, but. They, they certainly they greatly assist pedestrians and bikes, bicyclists crossing. And, and being, being an avid cyclist myself, I can, I can attest to the fact that that intersection is very difficult to, 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 to navigate. People with little children walking to the, to the Rackets Club or at the train station you know, complain all the time about how dangerous it is. I have neighbors who tell me that they will avoid that intersection at all, at all costs. So I think it's a problem that needs to be addressed. And I know, there, there, I understand recently there may be a, a grand plan to address that whole area around the train station and change the, the, the flow of traffic there, which, which from my perspective is certainly fine to address. I know it will take some time 
And I think that in, in, as a stopgap measure, it, it ought to, a four-way four stop ought to be created at that intersection. Um, I think it's also noteworthy that Summit, the town, town right next to us, added a four-way stop on the corner of Hobart Avenue, actually also Hobart Avenue, and, and White Ridge Road. Uh, that was another intersection that had been a two-way stop, and it was confusing for, 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 for motorists, and they made it into a four-way stop. They did it very strategically. They added, they added uh, temporary stop signs in the middle of the road so that people knew that had, something had changed, and it seems to have transitioned fine, and now it's a four-way stop, and it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a low-cost way to add, add, add a layer of safety to our streets, and I think it ought to be seriously investigated and, and, and acted on quickly because we're, we're, we're now in the school year and, and, and safety ought to be paramount. Um, I really do believe it's long overdue. Uh, and, and again, I don't think this would interfere with any other plans for that area. I think they ought to be considered, but I don't, I don't think that whatever, if adding two stop signs to the intersection now would not, would not in any way get in, get in the way of a, of a grand plan to change the, the, the uh, circulation in that in that neighborhood so, thank you for your time thank you Ed Mazer Greenwood Drive uh, there was a discussion earlier tonight on electronic signs we have an ordinance uh, governing electronic signs and first question would be whether or not the township intends to comply with its own ordinance <laughs> on the on the signs the ordinance is very detailed as far as location of the signs uh, the size of the sign and also the content of the sign and one of the things is uh, uh, that there cannot be any flashing signs and there's not supposed to be any motion on these signs uh, and I think the one at the uh, middle school, I think, is questionable whether it does comply with the ordinance. I don't find it offensive, but perhaps you may want to take a look, if you're going to put these in, at uh, revising uh, the ordinance uh, on this or uh, alternatively exempting the township from its own ordinance. Uh, one of the things you may want to look at is your current ordinance prohibits portable signs, such as the type that the police haul around from location to location. And I think you, you may want to, at a minimum, look at uh, maybe uh, legalizing uh, that aspect of the ordinance. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Hi, my name's Lily Lee. I'm a, I'm a town resident. I've been here for 13 years living on Wells Lane for eight years. Um, I'm here to talk about a topic that relates to what Brett Cohen just talked about, but I'm gonna mention it from a different perspective. Um, you know, I, I would like for the town to consider a more incremental, more moderate approach to solving this dangerous intersection issue. So back in February, I had contacted Alex as well as Martha, the engineer, highlighting the, how dangerous this intersection was. Before Valentine's Day, there were already three accidents at that intersection. So I am concerned with, you know, with, the da with how dangerous that intersection is. But quite honestly, I am not an advocate to put in a four-way stop sign there. And the reason why is because I live on Wells Lane. And Wells is, I don't know, I'm just, I don't really know. I didn't take exact measurements, but my guess is about 200 feet away from the intersection. And my concern is that that's gonna create cut through traffic on my street. And we have little kids that play on that street. Um, d during rush hour, I'm afraid that there's gonna, it's gonna create cut through traffic. So I'm proposing the idea that maybe you guys look into speed bumps. Maybe let's try speed bumps for now. Um, and see if that will help with this, with this issue. Um, I would also, at some point, I, I had reached out to Jody and Jackie about a month ago, maybe a little over a month ago, asking, you know, how effective has these flashing red light been on the stop sign? You know, because I know you guys have made changes I just want you know some feedback if that's been effective at all or not. 
So anyways, I would appreciate some kind of response on that at some point. Thank you very much. Thank you. No one else. Hi, I'm Bob Rice. I'm also a resident of Wyndham Road and also impacted by this issue. So as long as we have the conversation going, might as well keep it going a little bit. Uh, I, I do think this is an incredibly serious issue. One thing was not nobody mentioned yet is that this is an inter intersection that kids walk to all three schools through every day. So it, it's really demands attention. And there have been so many accidents there. We've gotten emails have been very difficult to get the township engineers to respond uh, about what they're doing they're not doing they're coming to conclusions that four-way stops aren't warranted I, or or not we just maybe there's this grand plan we don't know but the perfect is the enemy of the good and you have an immediate safety concern right now and it it's really must be addressed some way or another i'm not an engineer uh, I certainly think that a four-way stop is a very practical, very low-cost thing. If it backs up and creates other problems down the road, you can address them down the road. I mean, it doesn't, you know, sometimes you're just overthinking things. Just put them in and see what happens. If it's a problem, it's a problem. We would find another way to address it. But that's a simple, easy, obvious thing to do. The problem with the issue, you know, putting bright red stops on, on is you're stopping the wrong level of traffic. The problem is cars come flying down that hill and cars that are attempting, once they have stopped, there's never been a problem with people stopping, they stop already. That's not the issue. The problem is you can't see well enough and it's not a tree, it's just geography. There's a hill there. People come flying down that hill all of the time. They go through that intersection way too fast. People think that they've got time to cross, they don't, and that's why you have so many accidents there. It's, it, it's honestly just not that complicated, folks. So please do something to address it, and if it doesn't work perfectly, guess what? You can fix it later, but just putting, you know, I'll pay for it. Put the stop signs there. It's just not a big deal to do that. Uh, I just don't understand why we have to think this through at such a macro level that nothing actually happens while a dangerous situation continues to present itself. Thank you. May I ask a question? Oh, I can't. I'll ask you later. Thank you. Good evening, Dave Cosgrove, 99 Oakview. I was hoping for an update on the mediation. Uh, well, mediation is a private session that uh, is confidential as between the parties in the mediation. So um, a mediation session did occur. Uh, it occurred last Thursday, uh, but I can't disclose uh, what occurred during that mediation. Is there another date scheduled? Not right now, no. Okay. That hesitation makes me want to ask a follow-up question. What's, what's up? <coughs> that I you told can't you all I can tell you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, BB Shear, 101 Oakview Terrace. A couple of meetings ago, I had asked about the process um, for uh, dealing with the uh, builder's remedy litigation, and I believe you, uh, uh, Madam Mayor, or maybe some of the other people on the Township Committee said you would check into it and let us know. So what, what's the process here? What's going on? What, if there is a settlement, it, I understand yep. at the right. mediation there, there would Correct. It could so, be a settlement, then what would happen? So if there was a settlement, um, then the, uh, both parties would have to uh, sign a settlement document. Uh, there would be a resolution of this committee to approve a settlement. It would then go to the Superior Court of New Jersey uh, for a fairness hearing, whereby the public would then have an opportunity uh, to say whatever they would like about the proposed settlement terms. And then after the fairness hearing, uh, if it's approved by the uh, court, um, it would then be a binding settlement document, and then uh, the builder would likely then go to the planning board. Um, what about um, before the township committee or the town signs the settlement? Would we? Would, is it going to be no information? We'll know when the town signs the settlement, or is there going to be some way for the town to uh, members of the public to? Uh, 
have some say or at least to, for us to know before the town signs yeah, the settlement. I think the opportunity for the public on a uh, settlement of a builder's remedy lawsuit is really at the fairness hearing. Oh, so there'll be nothing. The town will the, take action the, without the, the uh, town this would coming take, back before the, before the public. There would be a resolution that follows a normal resolution process um, at the town hall. But the fairness hearing is really the opportunity for all members of the public to say what they would like to say uh, at the Superior Court. Uh, I'm still not clear. I'm so sorry. What is this resolution that you're talking about? Are you saying there will be a resolution before the Township Committee that will be, have to be passed before the Township Committee signs the settlement? That's correct. my question. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, so there correct. will be. So that, that will be public, that resolution? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so we will know about it before we will before it's signed by the town. Yes, and then it would go to a fairness hearing for approval by the court. Okay, thank you. Wait, not no, before no, no. it's signed. I think she's misunderstood. She wants to know whether the resolution to submit to the settlement, whatever it is, is before or after the settle the fairness hearing. That resolution would be before a fairness hearing. Yeah. Right. So, to be fair to the, uh, the questioner, we would be presented with a resolution without the details of a settlement. Instead, the resolution would be to approve a settlement, the details of which would be absent from the resolution, and then it would be presented at the fairness hearing, right? The resolution to authorize the approval of the settlement would attach the proposed settlement agreement. Right. Right. And then it would go to a fairness hearing. Let's so just move back from the fairness Stop. hearing. One second. One second. So the question is, the resolution that is made available to the public, will that contain the elements of the settlement? Yes. Fair question? That's the question, right? That's the question. Thank you, Mayor. Yes. Yeah, it should contain it should contain the, the settlement document. It would be the same then if it's approved it would go to the Superior Court of New Jersey, which is also a public forum for anybody to she's she's more interested in, in, what, happens in what happens in the township community. Yes. Right. Yeah. yes. Thank you. Right. Anyone else? Do I have any motion to adjourn? So moved. We have a second. second. We are adjourned. Seven forty five. Yeah. Alex, what time? 7.30 or 7.45? 7.45. Because it's 8.30. Taking a picture of the whole picture with the sign. So the reason I said